heating and air companies that cut corners. A lot of guys call them hacks. In this video, I want to give you 10 things that guys do that cut corners all the time. And the way I came up with the idea for this video is I was just talking to a lady last week and I was telling her, look, we don't do what you're asking us to do. We at Griffin Air, we don't cut corners. And she was extremely offended that I would insinuate that she was cutting corners. It was a very difficult conversation to have, but ultimately we decided that we were just not a fit because at Griffin Air, we don't cut corners. That's what she wanted done. She wanted some corners to be cut and she wanted to have a handyman do her heating and air work. It's a long story, but rather than dive into all of that, I thought I want to help folks that see this video and tell you 10 things that are cutting corners in the heating and air industry that folks do all the time. And maybe they don't realize they're cutting corners until it's too late. They cut the corner, save a few bucks here, only to find out that later down the road, they wish they didn't. And some of these things, I can tell you I've actually had homeowners say to me, my gosh, I just wish I wouldn't have done that. It ended up being a huge mistake in the end. So let's go through it. 10 things that are cutting corners when you're dealing with heating and air repairs and equipment. Number one, heat load calculations. I can tell you that a lot of houses we go in today that there wasn't a heat load calculation done. And in fact, when we request one to be performed or done at Griffin Air, we've had pushback on that because homeowners will say, well, look, it was this way for many years. And I I think that that is sometimes a valid argument, especially if we're replacing a system and the home always had a certain size in their house. A little bit of common sense would say to you that it's possible that that system is sized correctly, but it's very easy to oversize or undersize a heating and air system. In fact, I would say I see more, at least where we're at, systems oversized than undersized. And folks just don't realize because it reaches temperature, the air conditioning turns on and it reaches temperature and everything Everything must be fine until it's not fine, right? Everything's fine until it's not fine. And so I would just recommend wholeheartedly you get a heat load calculation done. Can't tell you how many times I've recommended that to folks, especially you guys, people that will comment on my videos, they'll say, I've got this situation, what should I do? And I'll say, you should get a heat load calculation done in that situation. Even if you have to pay for it, get a heat load calculation done. So everybody does it different. Some companies out there will even, maybe they'll do like a quick heat load calculation until they get into it and then they'll do a full proper one so that way they're not working for free. Some companies will just straight out say I'll do it for free and then some companies will simply make the customer pay up front uh, for that proper heat load calculation to be done. Which oh by the way if someone makes you do that if you can't find anybody to do one for free I think that it's worth to, to do it. So that way you know you're good and it's been sized correctly and you had the proper calculation done. Number two mismatching equipment. This was not a big deal when I first got in the industry. I'd see systems that in some cases they were different brands, they were different sizes. I can tell you I've seen like a two ton condenser paired with five ton air handler or vice versa. And of course they wonder why their compressor doesn't make it, right? If you got a five ton condenser with a two ton air handler, you are definitely asking that compressor to do some special things there. But when I first got in this trade, R22 was king and it was very forgiving. It allowed a lot of people that were not very skilled in the heating and air industry to get by. A lot of guys would joke around and say, yeah, I charged the refrigerant to beer can cold. That's what they used to call it. And they would grab the copper line and if it felt beer can cold, then it must be charged correctly. With these newer refrigerants, you can't do that anymore. You have to charge it correctly, whether it be take a proper subcool measurement or whatever, superheat, whatever the measure is that they're doing to charge that equipment. And now you actually have guys that are having to learn things that they never had to learn. They know what static pressure and airflow is now too. You know, it's just crazy. So mismatching equipment, big no-no today. In fact, I won't typically, and that's what this lady and I were kind of going back on. That is, we just won't mismatch equipment. If you want us to do it at Griffin Air, it's going to be an AHRI match equipment. It's going to be installed correctly, and we're not going to cut any corners. Next, going with the cheap guy. A lot of homeowners will either get some quotes and just automatically go with the cheapest bid or the cheapest repair, cheapest solution only to find out that it ends up not being the cheapest in the end. I remember talking to a homeowner not that long ago, a few months ago, and him telling me that that's what he did. He went with the cheapest solution only to find out that it ended up being one of the more expensive solutions when he had to get everything straight. I'm not saying that going with your least expensive bid is a mistake every time. I'm just saying that if you get, say, four quotes and three of them are 10 grand and one of them is five grand, you got to ask yourself, why is it only five grand? 
grand, you know? And I also see folks that will get Chuck in a truck or stand in a van that it's doing it on the side for beer money, and that's fine if that's what you want. And then they find out in the end, the hard way, that that was a mistake as well. In the example I was talking about before where the lady and I were talking, she was having a handyman do some of their heating and air work, and I refused to work there with him working because it was just too much of a liability for us at Griffin Air. She's going with the cheap guy, right? And so I think that's a mistake, but folks are allowed to do whatever they want to, right? Number four, all the good companies in your area, and I say good companies loosely, you need to probably determine who's good and who's not first, right? But if all the good companies in your area are not willing to do something, something you wanted them to do, there's probably a reason for that, okay? So if you're saying you know, you've called several companies and you want this over here done and those companies are saying, we're not gonna do that. We're not going to put a wrong compressor that's sitting in your garage that you got from your brother-in-law in that heating and air system. I'm, we're not gonna touch that. Or we're not gonna install some system that you bought on Amazon and there's just too much liability there for us or whatever. If all the good companies in your area are avoiding something, it's not just about money at that point, in my opinion, right? If all the good ones are saying that, hey, you probably don't wanna do that, then probably a reason for that. They've probably been down that road before. They've probably had homeowners tell them that's a mistake after they went down that road. Oh, here's another one. If all the good companies in your area won't do work for home warranty companies, there might be a reason for that. Number five, upsizing the equipment just to upsize it. And so this kind of goes back to the heat load calculation one. I can tell you in Virginia where we're located near the water, humidity is a big deal. And if you oversize equipment, not only does it short cycle, but it can create mold and mildew problems because of the humidity that's in the air. And so we have folks that'll call us and they'll say, hey, you know, I had a two ton in there now, but I want to go ahead and put a three or a two and a half in there. Let's just go ahead and go up in size. If it's not that much more in money, I'm just going to go ahead and go up to the next side. And that would be a corner cut. You need to, again, get a proper helo calculation. And if nothing else, go with the size that's correctly sized for your home and not just go up a size because you think it's better. This isn't your truck that you drive a big old diesel truck, even though you never haul anything because you want the capability or the extra oomph. Heating and air conditioning is not that way. You don't need the extra oomph. You need what you need. Number six, not enough returns or not properly sized returns. And this probably goes for all ductwork. It's not just the return. I see systems all the time where the ductwork is not sized correctly or they don't have enough return air going through that system and they are just asking for problems. I get this sometimes. Folks will say, well, I had a system in here before. I had a system that was in here for 15 or 20 years and it ran just fine. And then we got this system put in and we're having nothing but issues. And you're telling me the ductwork is the problem? We've had to do that a few times at Griffin Air. We've had to go behind another company and the homeowners call us because the other company can't seem to figure it out. And we find out the ductwork is undersized. But as I said earlier in this video, R22 was much more forgiving. You could just take a little refrigerant out and reduce the airflow and get by with small ductwork or undersized ductwork sometimes. So now you don't have enough returns. You might have to add one. And another thing that happens when it, we're talking about not enough returns is folks will get certain parts of their home that are just not being air conditioned well. And so a lot of times they'll throw more vents in there. They'll even have a heating and air company install another duct. So let's say they got this room that's just staying hot during the summer. They'll get the company to run another heating and air supply duct over there. So now they've got two registers in that same room and they're still having issues. And what they don't realize is it's actually the return air that's the problem. There's not enough return air and you're just dumping air in there and it's not being able to cycle through the system very well, creating a positive bubble of air in there. It just can't cool very well. Number seven, not not actually fixing the issue. Small repairs or just adding refrigerant. We would bump into this sometimes where folks, again, they want to go with the cheapest option. They don't want to actually fix the issue. They want to kind of band-aid it. And sometimes I'll even say to folks, that's fine if you just want to band-aid it for now. I'm no psychic. If we put a band-aid on this repair, if we just repair this enough to where you get you by, who's to say you might not get a more time out of that? Usually I can guess, right? Based on experience, I might be able to say, look, you're only going to buy yourself another year or two. But again, 
again, I'm no psychic. We've had folks that they get another five years out of that. But I think that there does come a point where if you're having to add refrigerant to a system every year, it seems like every spring, summer's rolling around, it's time to add some refrigerant to my system again. We used to see that a whole lot more. Refrigerant's gotten so expensive that we see a little less of that today. But when we find folks like that and they'll say, it's like every year I just have to add refrigerant to my system. Well, that's not normal. You have a leak then. That refrigerant is going somewhere and let's find out where. If nothing else, add some dye to the system. Some guys hate dye, but let's do something. Let's figure out where this leak is and go from there. Number eight, and this kind of plays off of this too, but this is making a repair or a band-aid when it's time to probably replace that system. And you might say, well, Josh, you're just trying to sell heating and air conditioning units here. That's why you're saying this. Maybe that's true for some companies. Some companies are just trying to, rather than repair here, let's just replace it. And there are companies out there or guys out there that get paid by commission and that is kind of their thing. I've had customers say to me, Josh, I wish someone would have wrung my neck and, and just got it through my thick skull that does it make sense to put $1,500 into a system that's 15 years old that the next year something drastic happens and now they do need to replace the system. When they could have just went ahead and replaced the system from the get-go and had that 10-year warranty or 12-year warranty, had a new system, had no issues, and that money that they spent on that could have gone towards a new system and now they're having to spend the money anyway. I've heard that more than once where folks wish they just went ahead and bit the bullet. Number nine, good HVAC guys don't go behind someone else. And this is kind of what I was talking about a minute ago. Handyman, I don't go behind them if I find out that there's a handyman getting in there with his grubby hands and trying to fix air conditioners or he's taking the cover off. Usually I will just walk away. Homeowner probably doesn't want to hear that. But that also goes for the homeowner themselves. If I find out that a homeowner is kind of a Mr. Fix It and they're kind of getting in there with their hands and trying to figure things out. That's fine. I'm just not your guy. And a lot of heating and air guys won't go behind you either. It's just too much liability. A lot of times I, I could tell you, I had a homeowner a few years ago that we came out and made a repair. And then he called us back out a week later. And I later found out that he was getting in there and jumping some of the limit switches in a furnace because he was an engineer and he was trying things, he told me. And so I nicely exited stage left once I found out that that was what he was doing. A lot of good heating and air guys, it's too much liability and it also makes them look bad. Like for example, if I come in and diagnose a system and I say, hey look, this is what's wrong with your system, but then you go with someone else to do the repair. You go with your brother-in-law who took some heating and air classes at his community college and he comes in and makes that repair that I said needed to be made and then it doesn't fix it. And then you come back to me and mad because you say, well, it didn't fix it. You said that's what was wrong and not realizing it wasn't that it was misdiagnosed, it's who made the repair. Just my thoughts on that. I've been down that road a few times. Last thing, number 10 that I believe is cutting a corner when you're dealing with heating and air systems, putting in crappy equipment or crap brands. I know some of you guys are trying to avoid some of those crappy brands. I will say after uh, many requests, I have always avoided that question because I don't want to just get on here and bash certain brands. Then I can't get parts for them because the supplier gets wind that I'm talking about that brand or something, right? But I can tell you, if you go to New HVAC Guide, I do have a chart there after many folks had requested it. And I did do a chart where I tell you who's good and who's not. And not only do I rank them, but I tell you why they're ranked where they're ranked. I don't just say, hey, brand X is horrible. So I'm putting them here or, or I think they're great. So I'm putting them there. I actually tell you why I feel the way I do about certain brands. But I can probably tell you if none of the big heating and air companies in your area sell a certain brand, just because you can buy it online doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. There might be a reason why no one in your area sells that brand. Maybe there's no good suppliers. Maybe they can't get a part in your area for it. Or maybe there's other reasons too. All that said, what are your thoughts? If you watch this video all the way through and you have seen some corners cut when it comes to a heating and air system, let me know what you think. What did I miss? What should I have put on this list? I'm sure there are some pretty good stories that you guys can share. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.